Uh, <laughs> this bot hunts software bugs for the Pentagon. Champion of the 2016 DARPA contest at DEF CON, now Mayhem gets used by the military. That is pretty cool. Um, you know, you, you go and, and, and win a prize like that, and they just go, yeah, you, you work for us now. We're... I mean, they, they got that government money. They well, got they, that military money. I'd probably some, go with it. They had some stiff competition. They weren't the only ones to, like, vie for that product. The other, other nation states were after it as well. I, I'll be honest with you. I had a really petty reason for putting this article in the queue. This is my article. Um, I got I got distracted by the first couple of paragraphs where it found a bug in Cloudflare's, um, uh, like, image processing. Oh, yeah. And it was, like, crashing their image pre-processing routine. And they were like, we would have never found that. And all it did was like throw up a bunch of like black and uh, yeah, gray pixelated gray squares. Pixel. And they were like, well, can we see that? They're like, no. And I was like, well, why couldn't you see the, the image? Why? How would I know what's going on with the image? Um, but from what I read in the was article. Is it a QR code? I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, what it sounds like a bunch of. <laughs> oh, man, I just, that's, that's Cloudflare's bank account. Maybe it was. Um, <laughs> but then it goes on to talk about other parts of like Mayhem has become part of Cloudflare's standard security suite. But the goal is to help – Mayhem was created to help individuals identify software bugs faster so you could fix them faster. Uh, and from what I can tell, it is a, a very complicated fuzzer. It kind of deviates in the article. So it talks about Mayhem, then it talks about the contract, then it talks about fuzzing a little bit just in general because it's not even talking about Mayhem from what I can tell. Can you give me that term a little bit? I don't I, – I hadn't heard that. So term. fuzzing – uh, I just start throwing garbage at you and see what happens. And then if I'm really good at it, I can construct like pointed like data and go, well, if I give it this, what happens? Oh, it crashes. Oh, that's cool. Um, so it's just I'm running through input to try So it's to different destroy. than a DDoS. It's not trying to uh, crash it with just overwhelming amount of information. It's seeing if that like the, the specific information will yeah. cause something. So either and I say crash, but just have some weird anomalous behavior. So. Maybe I can construct it to where it takes a, a weird code path and it returns information that it shouldn't, like a database stump or um, I get technically, I guess they could have found out, did they find out Heartbleed with Fuzzing Daniel or was was that just somebody observing that? Uh, I'm not 100% on that. Um, like, know, we don't know I what know all that, this data is. Do you want root access? Yeah, I know that fuzzing is used like in, in the spaces that I work in is to, and basically you're trying to see if, if you can make an application crash, it's not necessarily like, kind of like what Peter was talking about, not so that the application will crash. Cool, I can do that now so I can create a denial of service attack, but ultimately it will lend to something like exploit development. So I've given it some input. It did not know what to do with said input, and therefore the computer crashed because it didn't know how to handle the error. That being the case, maybe I can leverage that to, uh, this is where like buffer overflows, stack-based and whatnot come into play. So if I'm able to crash the program by giving it weird input or input that it doesn't expect or too much input, then maybe I can get to an overflow situation and get remote code execution. The fuzzing was the first technique. The second technique uh, and fuzzing, you know, for those of you who aren't there, you just throw garbage at it and see what sticks. Or uh, there's a different saying where I come from, but we're going to keep that off the podcast. Uh, the other one was symbolic execution where it generates a mathematical representation of the target software and tries to surmise more complex issues that may arise by anal analyzing that mathematical model. And it said that has mostly been used in research labs, but that makes sense because Mayhem came out of Carnegie Mellon, which is a huge computer science research facility. So, If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.